Debbie from the Sterling Heights Library um, and here today I'm going to be talking about Alfred Hitchcock movies. Um, you know the library is a, it's, he's a classic director. Uh, the library has uh, most of his better known movies on DVD and you might be able to find a few on uh, the digital services also. Um, Alfred Hitchcock <clears throat> Looks like this. <clears throat> Pretty well-known character. Uh, shows up in our culture everywhere, kind of. <laughs> um, so he was born in 1899 in England. Um, he had a pretty typical upbringing. Uh, he worked on movies uh, in England uh, in the 1920s. They were silent movies at the time. Uh, that he worked on. Um, so there are a number of, of Alfred Hitchcock movies uh, that are silence, that, uh, but they're very hard to find. Uh, I don't think any libraries have them on DVD or anything, uh, but they do exist, so it's just as part of his history. Um, so he was born in 1899. He worked in England and, and through the 20s and up until uh, the 1940s, he became pretty well known and moved to Hollywood and continued the rest of his directing career in Hollywood. Um, over his career, he uh, directed a, around 60 movies. And uh, the first uh, 20 or so, or not 20, 12, uh, were silence. And then after that, they were the typical sound movies that we know today. Um, so he was uh, had a, a one of the most illustrious careers uh, in film history. He was known as the master of suspense, and he was also very good at comedy and romance and horror too. Uh, and a lot of that figured in a number of his movies as well. Um, so he was uh, knighted in 1979 uh, in England. So he's Sir Alfred Hitchcock. Um, he never won any Oscars, but he did win a Lifetime Achievement Award. Uh, he, um, he had a, a very slow, distinctive way of talking, uh, which people can imitate pretty well. And, and you'll find characterizations of him showing up in, in lots of things. Um, he another cool thing that is with his movies is almost all of them he does a cameo appearance within the movie where if you watch really closely uh there will be somewhere in the movie where you'll be able to see him as a person you know he doesn't have a speaking part or anything like that but he's like off in a distance and like an extra um He'd be like in a street scene, maybe a man down the road or somebody getting off a train or, you know, off a bus or buying a newspaper. Um, but it's kind of a fun game when you're watching his movies to try to find uh, the spot where he appears. Um, uh, you know, I, I read where he often tried to put that scene early on in the movie so that it didn't distract film goers from the content of the movie and, and trying to, to look and find him uh, in his little secret spot there. <laughs> so that's something that's, that's fun to watch for. If you like, you could Google um, Alfred Hitchcock cameos and it'll give you lists and charts of, of where he is in each of his movies. But it's kind of fun to try to figure it out on your own too. Um, the movies I'm going to talk about here are ones that have been considered to be in, in his top uh, top tier of, of quality titles. Uh, you know, it varies from list to list, but these are ones that are typically on, on all of the lists. Uh, I've seen most of them, but not all of them. Um, the library, like I said, has most they're all available on dvd either directly from the sterling heights library or we can get them for you from other libraries so you can put them on hold through our system and, uh, and then when the libraries open you know then you'll be in line to get them so if you see something here uh, that appeals to you you can search it out i'm going to show uh, 
a movie poster kind of image for each title that I'm I'm showing, so you get kind of a feel of what they were mark how they were marketing it back when. Um, the first and I'm going to show them in order chronologically. Uh, I'm not going to try to rank them because it's different for different people and what your preferences are. Uh, so I'm going to just put the earliest films first and talk a little bit about each one. So this first one I'm showing, I'm going to talk about is Shadow of a Doubt. Um, and this is the movie poster from that. Uh, I had Teresa Wright and Joseph Cotton in it. Um, Joseph Cotton played Teresa Wright's uncle. And he comes into town. They live in a, a small town someplace. And he comes into town to visit the family. And she starts suspecting that her uncle has a dark, terrible secret. And indeed he does. And it's, it's very good. Uh, it's one of my favorite movies of his. Um, this is from 1943. Um, so, you know, it was just... Very good. I highly recommend this one. The second one I'm going to talk about is Notorious. It's the poster from that. Um, it has Cary Grant, Ingrid Bergman, and Claude Rains. It's Claude down here. Um, that was it's uh, that was from 1946. And it's a, it described as a top-notch espionage tale uh, set in post-World War II South America. Um, I have to say, this is one I have not seen. I'm not really into espionage stories too much, but I probably ought to give it a try. But um, this is usually listed as one of, one of the very top ones in the Hitchcock uh, list of works. So if anyone really is interested in, in Hitchcock, you probably ought to give this a try. The third one, which I had never heard of until a couple weeks ago, and I saw them, heard them discussing it. I'm on a, a Facebook group, this Turner Classic Movie fan group, and, and they talk about Hitchcock a lot. And... Uh, Somebody had brought this particular title up, and I had never heard of it before. So I uh, found it and watched it. It's called The Rope, and it's from 1948. And uh, it's Jimmy Stewart is this is one of the stars. It also has Farley Granger and John Dahl. Um, it's from yeah 1948. Um, the story which I, I really enjoyed it. It was, was very good. I was surprised I had never heard of it. Um, there's two young men uh, decide to kill, to murder an old prep school pal just for the thrill of it. So they kill this guy, they strangle him with the rope, and uh, then they're in New York City, and they have this cocktail dinner party and invite the guy's family and friends over for this party while his body is is hidden away in the apartment so they think this is is a, a cool <laughs> thrill to have his dead body there while his loved ones are there so it's a whole lot of suspense about uh in the uh, you know big getting found out and, and all that. Um, uh, Jimmy Stewart plays a friend who comes to the party and starts figuring stuff out. And uh, it's, it's very, very good. I, you know, I'm surprised that I hadn't heard of it before and maybe you haven't either, um, but you should uh, give that a try. Next one. This is one of my favorites too, Strangers on a Train from 1951. Um, that features two men, one of them's a tennis pro celebrity, who meet on a train trip and get chatting. And uh, they, the, uh, the tennis pro ends up 
getting in a misunderstanding in their conversation and he accidentally makes an agreement with this guy to be involved in a uh, nasty crime event. <laughs> and he realizes it too late after things are already underway and uh, it, it becomes a very interesting thing watching um, this crazy guy and and the tennis player try to get through this thing and, and what happens. Uh, Alfred Hitchcock's daughter, Patricia Hitchcock, is in this movie as a teenager and plays pretty a significant key role in it. Uh, it's kind of disturbing. You know, it's one of those things that once you see, you kind of think about it for a while. <laughs> um, but, but it is a very good movie. I highly recommend it. Next one is Rear Window, which is another one of my absolute favorite movies. I can't even count how many times I've watched this movie. Every time it's on, I just, you know, my husband and I just love it. We just watch it and watch it and watch it. <laughs> And uh, part of it is because my husband says I come from generations of what he calls looky-loos, where I like to watch and see what's going on in the neighborhood. Um, anyway, it's from 1954. Uh, James Stewart and Grace Kelly. Um, James Stewart plays a professional photographer who has a broken leg and is laid up in his home in his apartment in New York City and is stuck in a wheelchair while he recovers. So he sits there in his apartment and has nothing else to do. Uh, apparently, you know, they had not much TV back then or something. And so he uses his binoculars and watches the other apartments across the way from him. Um, Grace Kelly is his gorgeous, beautiful girlfriend. Um, she has like the greatest wardrobe in the world in this movie. And, you know, she's just so beautiful. It's just, you know, worth watching it just for her too. Um, so he's, he watches his neighbors and they find, you know, he sees something that, you know, he gets involved in something that he didn't expect to get involved in in, in, in his observing. Um, and then they try to deal with that situation. It's very, very suspenseful uh, and, you know, worth watching over and over again. It's just great. Next one is Vertigo. Um, Vertigo is Jimmy Stewart again. Um, it's 1958. Um, Hitchcock used Jimmy Stewart a lot and Cary Grant in a number of his movies. Um, Jimmy Stewart in this one plays a retired uh, police detective who gets hired by a friend of his to kind of track his wife who he's suspicious of, you know, uh, having an affair or something. And uh, so he falls for her and then, you know, then things happen, and, uh, and it's set in San Francisco. Uh, he's afraid of heights. He has a, a, a phobia of heights. That's what the vertigo is from. And uh, it's a very suspenseful, lots of twists and turns in this. Uh, and it's one of the more discussed uh, titles of Hitchcock uh, that they discuss for uh, plot and everything. Uh, so one thing I, I looked at says it demands multiple viewings. So this is a, a very good one. Next one is North by Northwest, 1959, Cary Grant has that classic crop dusting scene that they copy in all kinds of things. Uh, he, he, uh, it's sort of a comedy thriller, uh, where he's a, an ad man and he's chased across the country by spies and by the police who all think he's something other than he is. So he's stuck in this situation. Uh, Eva Marie Saint is the female lead in it. Uh, it also has a, the legendary scene where they're on Mount Rushmore. Um, so those are both scenes that are, you know, carry over into all kinds of, of 
copies of things and references to it from other other works, other movies and things like that. So if you want to be culturally aware of things, you should should have seen this. Next one, which I'm sure you've heard of, Psycho, uh, 1960. Um, that's Anthony Perkins and Janet Lee. Um, Janet Lee is the mother of Jamie Lee Curtis, another actress who you're more probably maybe more familiar with for her more modern movies. Um, it's his is Hitchcock's most notorious film. Uh, which follows uh, Janet Lee, who plays a larcenist uh, woman who picks the wrong place to stay for the night, the Bates Motel up on the hill, which is run by a creepy young man. And lots of things go wrong for people in this movie. And uh, it's just legendary, <laughs> very classic the soundtrack um so if you haven't ever seen it you have to see it next one is the birds that was this is my first hitchcock movie i ever saw my mom had me watch it when i was a kid which was kind of care scary to me because it had that classic scary scary horrible scene in the schoolyard and like schoolyards were my world at the time <laughs> I'm like oh <laughs> anyways Tippi Hendren is is the female lead and she's the mother of Melanie Griffith who's became a, a famous actress in her own right um Tippi Hendren Rod Taylor and Suzanne Plachette Suzanne Plachette is from the Bob Newhart show you'd recognize her um, but anyway, the movie is uh, set in a small coastal New England town, and the birds there start to get pretty aggressive. And they start attacking people, and it's like an apocalypse. <laughs> it's really scary. Um, it's gory in some scenes. You know, it's, it's pretty disturbing and horrifying. And if you're got any qualms about birds anyway you'd be really freaked out um so it has some really classic scenes uh, that schoolyard scene being one of them uh so that was 1963 the birds uh, this next one was not on all of the best lists but i really enjoyed it it was really different um it's called the trouble with harry um, it's from 1955, and it, this one is actually more of a comedy. Uh, it had John Forsyth and Shirley MacLaine. Shirley MacLaine's first, it was her first movie. It's her here. Um, and Ed, Edmund Gwynn, it's the old guy there, um, and Jerry Mathers. Um, Jerry Mathers played the beaver, uh, and he plays her son in it. Uh, so he was cute in it. Anyway, it's a hilarious um, dark comedy about this small town in New England uh, where there's this corpse that causes a problem for everybody. And they keep digging them up and moving them, and it's back and forth, back and forth. And it's just, it's very, very funny. Um, and it's, it's sort of similar to Arsenic and Old Lace, that kind of feel to it. You know, it's, if you've ever seen that, if you like Arsenic and Old Lace, you'd, you'd like The Trouble with Harry. Um, it's got beautiful scenery in it. It's set, you know, in New England in the fall and it's just gorgeous. The, you know, the cinematography on it is, is very pretty and, and it's, it's very funny. So if you, uh, find this uh give that a watch too uh, so that's all the movies i was going to talk about um you know they are all available through the library cooperative you know if, if not at the sterling heights library we can get it for you um easily from one of the other local libraries so that's uh what i was going to say about alfred hitchcock Doo -doo. so there he is um 
Have a good day.